It is a milestone for ISRO today as ISRO and NASA are going ahead with the next level of collaboration with NISAR, NASA ISRO Synthetic Aperture Radar, a satellite weighing 2.9 tons which will be taken to the space using this model. What you see over here is a GSLV Mark II. Resembling this would be the rocket that would be taking that satellite and that itself is very important because this is a satellite carrying two payloads, an L-band and an S-band of which one is made by ISRO and the other one is made by NASA and the interesting factor is that this actual radar will go ahead and it will be emitting almost 1000 per of microwaves and that would be that kind of pulse, 1000 pulse would actually help in mapping Earth. Now, there are various kind of sensors and imagery methods that are used to actually go ahead and map Earth. We have like, uh, uh, like imaging, optical imaging as such, but this is much, much more advanced. Imagine the satellite construction itself has taken almost 10 years and more than $1.5 billion have been spent on this particular satellite. And the important aspect is that, like I told you, ISRO is going to be the one that is going to carry the satellite through this, this model of a GSLV, a Mark II would carry it almost 787 kilometers above Earth's surface, the altitude where it will be placed. But the important aspect is that this particular satellite construction itself actually falls on the complex spectrum of difficulty because what's going to happen is that this particular satellite will have a kind of a boom which will be nine meters long and on the end end to end of that particular boom will be an antenna slash reflector slash radiator which itself will have a kind of 12 meters of diameter which means on one end of this particular stick it will be stuck and it has to expand open up like an umbrella but not from the center but from the corner that itself is going to take almost eight days to complete and then NASA and ISRO will go ahead with the joint operations of controlling NISA. The important aspect of NISA is that it can actually go ahead and take macro and micro level images of Earth, especially of the glacial systems, which can go ahead and predict a lot of things, saving a lot of life, communication between humans and Earth and such. Everything would be easily, it'll be easy for us to get, you know, to take data, get data for the next five years. And that is why ISRO and NASA have come together with this particular satellite called as NISAR, which will be launched in this three-stage GSLV. You have four boosters, the second stage, and a third one, a cryogenic engine, which will be used actually to launch this uh, takeoff. And from here, it will be 787 kilometers above Earth's surface. It will be placed over there. Let us give you an in-depth insight as to what is happening in Sri Harikota Rocket Launch Space Center here and over there on the left side, what you see is the GSLV Mark II rocket and there, that's a three-stage rocket on the bottom, you could see four boosters and then you have the second stage and the top you have the third stage, a cryogenic stage on top of which we call the bus. That is the bus in which we have the satellite NISA. In fact, the center image shows the VLCC vehicle launch control system and also various cameras. These are the crews that are actually working night and day for the launch of this particular rocket over there and on to the right that end that you see over there that is the GSLV F-16 rocket carrying NISAR or NISAR mission satellite NASA ISRO synthetic aperture radar one of a kind satellite because it is a dual band satellite an L band and S band synthetic aperture radars for micro I mean millimeter variation that you could see over there and here you see that particular satellite the gold parts and everything on the left side if you see that is a kind of like a rod that is actually protruding to the left end that is actually a part of that boom. That boom alone is nine meters in length. And what they have done is that they have completely folded it around the body part of that particular satellite. And on the this is the actual rocket that you see the cryogenic sensor. But on the right side of that particular satellite, if you see, there is actually a kind of a cylindrical shape of multiple rods and things like that that are connecting with each other. That is the antenna slash reflector slash radiator. And this is designed in such a manner. Imagine if an umbrella umbrella has to expand, it will expand from a center point rod, but what's happening with that particular satellite, that particular antenna radar, and radiator and reflector is that, that will expand from the boom. So the entire antenna, which is 12 meters in diameter, is actually connected to one end, one side of the boom and from there it has to expand. This entire process is expected to take at least eight days and once it expands, that will be capable of emitting microwave pulses, radar pulses that will be reflected, absorbed, converted into 
according to data and this is very important because for once in 12 days it gets a complete image of earth and here micro level variation there are so many satellites which carry l band and s band but the concept here is to get accurate images that can be used internationally by the global community for early warning systems or for scientific purposes the main important aspect is that using these two bands we can actually do research about the micro level changes in a glacial movement how ice sheets are melting how it is actually impacting you no know, the impact of global warming and such or various other carbon emissions and such on glacial movements and such everything can actually be go we you know we can actually study using this particular satellite nisar and that is why it is considered very important and the very the cultural part of this particular satellite is that two nations from either end of the world united states of america and india have come together collaborated you know going against the distance they have constructed this particular satellite which will be used we gave you the technical importance of that particular satellite seven over 700 kilometers from earth surface it will be placed on orbit and from there for 5 years it is going to provide us with data NASA and ISRO are coming together with the launch of NISA through a GSLV Mark II and this itself is a magnificent view that you're going to see in any time right now a GSLV Mark II carrying a 2.9 ton weighing NISA NASA ISRO synthetic aperture radar and behind us there anytime you would see the GSLV Mark II a huge rocket from uh, the ISRO and there you have it that is a rocket and look at the amazing plume of uh, smoke that is coming out after the chemical reaction and the huge flame that you see from here and in a couple of seconds just like you know as light travels faster than sound you will hear the rumble as well and that is GSLV Mark II a three stage rocket carrying NASA and ISRO together made and that's the rumble we were talking about and that is GSLV Mark II soaring up over the sky carrying NISA definitely a milestone beautiful feather in ISRO's cap as a collaboration between ISRO and NASA have come together with the launch of GSLV Mark II carrying NISA the satellite a dual band satellite that is going to provide data very much clear data about the earth's surface for the next 5 years NISA over there atop the bus on a GSLV Mark II and this is how magical every moment in sri harikota is as a rocket launch occurs and a beautiful plume of smoke that's left behind that shows the kind of work and technology hard work of the isro scientists over here with every rocket launch that's what you see over there the actual outcome that is gslv mark 2 that has gone up and it is going to reach almost 747 kilometers of altitude where it will place this particular nisa nisar and from there it will actually initiate the scientific research which itself will take a quite a long time because uh, after this nisar being a complicated satellite it has to expand its boom and along with that it will actually go ahead and unfurl a nearly a 12 meter diameter antenna slash radar slash uh, uh, reflector slash uh, radiator and this is what it will actually emit the radar waves through which the scientific research would begin but now the launch has been we, from here we could see it has been beautifully done and in like maybe couple of minutes we will get the information about the launch and the various stages of it with divyan pramod madhav for india today